Okay, everybody. <clears throat> First, I hope my camera does not fall over. But I think we can proceed. Anyway, so, <clears throat> topic of this video, implicit differentiation. Um, in the, I thought I would do some problems that uh, you probably won't see in, in whatever homework assignment or quiz or, or whatever it is you're working on. You won't see these, but I think it's a good place to begin in order to establish something about how this is done, all right? So let's start with something that we, we ought to know how to do, all right? That's always a good place to begin when you learn something new is you tie it to something that you already know how to do. So anyway, so say we wanted to find the derivative of 1 minus uh, 4x all to the fifth power. Uh, how would we do that? Well, there's a, a rule for this called the chain rule. And the way that the chain rule is expressed for that sort of thing is, a uh, quick reminder, let me see if y is equal to u to the n power, where what's the u whenever we have the chain rule? The u is some function, some formula that involves x. So, so kind of like 1 minus 4x. Uh, well, in that case, then the chain rule says that its derivative is n times u to the n minus 1 power times u prime, okay? So, now that would be the rule for this one, right? I mean, it's, like we can tell it's the same thing. Uh, so, it would be 5 times 1 minus 4x to the 4th power, and then this part is whatever the derivative of that what I'm saying u is. What's the derivative of 1 minus 4x? It's negative 4, okay? And then we can simplify from there, but uh, I, I think I'll just leave it. I mean, we, obviously we can say it's negative 20 times 1 minus 4x to the fourth power. Now, when we go through this technique here that I'm going to show you in this video, um, we have to like think about doing this but in more abstract terms and what I mean by that is suppose I told you that I wanted the derivative with respect to x of y to the fifth power and what's the y well you're just gonna have to in your imagination have this awareness that y is some function of x you know sort of like that y right there is something like 1 minus 4x it's just that you don't know what it is. It's not given or it's not revealed or you're working with incomplete information. So suppose that this problem is like that one. You just don't know what that y part is supposed to be. What would the derivative be in this case? Well, I guess my point I want to make to you is would the rule be used any different? I mean, I'm telling you this problem and that problem are the same. It's just that you don't know what the y is. So it'd be 5 times y to the 4th power. And then what would that next thing be right there? Oh, the derivative of the y. What are we going to say that is? Like here we said, well, the derivative of 1 minus 4x is negative 4. Here we're just going to have to say it's y prime. Okay. All right. Now, do you see how these might look initially different, but they're not different at all? Just one is working with less information than the other, but the same rule and the same process is um, in play. All right, same thing with the, these two. Here's one more analogy. What's the derivative of cosine of 4x squared? Well, so real quick, there's we would use the chain rule for this. The chain rule for that sort of problem says if y is cosine of u... Or again, what's the u when in the chain rule? The u is some some function that involves another variable, such as x. Okay, so yes, uh, cosine 4x squared, so on. Uh, in that case, then it says y prime is negative sine u times u prime. So it's negative sine of the u times whatever the derivative of this u thing is right there. Uh, okay, so in my case with this one, it'd be negative sine 4x squared times 8x, right? Negative sine 4x squared times 8x, that would be it. 
and then I could simplify this one a little bit, but at least for right now, I'm not concerned about doing that. Um, now, again, my analogy between these two is the same as it was between those two. Uh, what would be the derivative with respect to x of cosine of y, assuming that that y is some function of x that is not revealed uh, in this problem? Well, you know, why would you treat it any different than that one? It would be negative sine y times y prime, right? Do you see how similar these are? 1 versus 2 and 3 versus 4 and so on. So that's the first thing I wanted to establish before we get into the details. Now, suppose that we wanted to find the derivative of something like this, meaning to find y prime, okay? One thing I noticed is that this problem is not solved for y. Uh, it, it doesn't put y as a function of x, okay? But still, that's somehow true, all right? In that equation, somewhere, somehow, y is a function of x. And what's my reasoning for that? Well, because that's how, that's how we do most math, most calculus, is that you have an equation where you plug in the x and you get the y. It's an input and an output. This one's not arranged that way, but somehow that might, that must be true, all right? That's... Rough, that's roughly our thinking about it. All right, so there we have it. That's, that's what I'm after for this one. Working with that equation, assuming that y is a function of x, what's y prime? Calculate dy over dx, otherwise known as y prime. Okay, so if, as far as this goes, there's two steps to the method, all right? First step, take the derivative with respect to x of all terms on both sides of the equation but all derivatives are y are immediately multiplied by y prime. And step, step two, solve for, solve whatever you get out of that for y prime, okay? So that's kind of like this, right? Whenever you take the derivative of y, I say, what's the derivative of y to the fifth power? It's five y to the fourth, and I multiply that by y prime because the y is really something more like that, all right? Okay, so so let's do that in order to find y prime of this, okay? So I'll work on the method down here. I'm going to say, okay, well, we have this equation, x squared plus 4y to the third is equal to 2, and then I want y prime, the derivative out of that, okay? For me to follow these two steps, here's what it's going to look like. My first step, I'll take the derivative with respect to x of all terms on both sides of that equation with whatever rule would apply. Okay, so I'll write it like that. So what do I say derivative with respect to x? Well, whenever we say derivative with respect to x, that means that x is the independent or input variable in the function and y is the dependent or output variable in the function. If I were to do that with the rules that are appropriate, derivative of x squared is 2x. What do we do with pluses? Well, we carry them down. Derivative of 4y to the third. That's going to be 12y squared. But it says up here, multiply all derivatives immediately by y prime. So I guess we would do this. But if you want the rationale for it, it's, you know, it's, I was address that here. I mean, that's why you multiply the y derivative by y prime. Because y is more than just a letter of the alphabet. It's a, it's a function of x, kind of like that. So that's the rationale behind it. And then over here, the derivative of 2, 2 being a constant at 0. Okay, so there's that part. And then the next part, I just have to solve, you know, whatever I got up there for y prime. Okay, so in other words, I can do things like if I was going to solve for y prime, I move the 2x over. And this part would just be algebra, right? 
and I would get like so. And then to completely isolate y prime, I'd divide by 12 y squared. So y prime is equal to negative 2x over 12 y squared. Uh, and there I have my derivative, my y prime. Uh, I could reduce that a little bit. We always reduce and simplify things when we can. Like a 2 and 12, those reduce. So, so let's say it's negative x over 6y squared. Okay, so there's your y prime. So that's a, a broad look at the method. The, the only difference from here is like maybe some of the problems will be more difficult than the others. Okay, uh, but there you see the method, all right, which is my uh, initial goal in showing you the first problem. Let's look at one that may be a little bit harder. Um, okay, so maybe this one's a little bit harder, you'll, you'll see. So, so again, I have some equation where I notice it's not solved for y. It doesn't say y equals, all right? That's when this method called implicit differentiation is appropriate, okay? If I have some equation and it doesn't say y equals, I mean, it's still assumed that somewhere in that equation somehow y is a function of x, but it's obviously not written that way, and, and I have to work with it the way that it is, let's say, okay? All right, now, so we have this, my point is we have the same starting position as the last problem. So what was the what were the steps? Okay, so we said step one, take the derivative with respect to x of all terms on both sides with whatever rule is appropriate. Okay, which I summarized that by writing this. Uh, and if I go from there, here's what I get. I notice on that first term, I would have to use the product rule, okay? So the product rule, 6x to the fifth power, the derivative of the first term, uh, times the second term, so f prime times g in other words, uh, plus g prime, what's the derivative of y to the fifth power? That'd be 5y to the fourth power, uh, but again, times y prime, right? because of what y is. Derivative of y to the fifth power is 5y to the fourth times y prime, and then times x to the sixth power. So f prime g, by the product rule, plus g prime, okay, times f. All right, so there's that part. Uh, so right here, all that expanded into this. So like this part right here, those two terms, that comes from the product rule, as was required to find the derivative of this. Now I'm to that minus. What do I do with that minus? Uh, I carry that down. What's the derivative of y? Well, I guess it would be 1. Uh, but all y derivatives, whatever they are, are multiplied by y prime. That's what the technique requires. And then over here, what's the derivative of x? That would also be 1, okay? All right, now I've got my end result on my first step, okay? Uh, second step is to solve like whatever that is, like whatever mess you got right there for y prime. Like it doesn't matter how awful that looks or how complicated it is, you solve it for y prime. Okay, I'll, how about this? Like I see I have y prime in, in two positions, like right there, in right there. If I was going to solve for y prime and isolate it, I'd, I'd have to, my first move would be to move this over to that side, that 6x to the fifth, y to the fifth. That would go over to the right hand side. So I'll go ahead and write that as my first step down here. I'll get 5y to the fourth times y prime times x to the sixth minus y prime. So that'd be these two terms. And I'm going to move this one to the right. So 1 minus 6x to the 5th, y to the 5th, okay? 
Now, my goal is to solve it for y prime. Like, I, I want an answer like I had to my last question. I want it to say something like y prime equals, and then I get some answer, right? I have to isolate that, though. And when I have, like, uh, two different terms with y prime in it, the technique in that case is to factor it out. Here's what I mean by that. So I'll say I factored out y prime. It would look like this. All right. Can we verify that? Can you tell that my factoring is correct? What if you multiply back through here? Do you get what you had previously? It's like you do. So that's, that's what factoring is. All right. So that can be confirmed. And now I'm here. Okay. And at this point, I'm only one step away from completely solving for y prime. All right. All I would have to do is divide both sides by this entire quantity. That's a multiplication. So if I divide, I'll cancel this. And I'll get my answer. All right. Here it is. It's going to be this thing. 1 minus 6x to the 5th y to the fifth, all right, divided by that thing, 5y to the fourth, x to the sixth minus 1. There's my y prime. That's what I was after. Okay, so now you saw initially like I worked a pretty easy problem, and now I think this one was a little bit harder than the last one. Let's do one more that I think we'll probably get the whole spectrum of, of difficulty that at least you'll see for now. All right, I'm not saying that there aren't harder problems out there than the ones I'm going to show you, but this will do for now. So let's see, let's do, let's do this one. Calculate y prime for that. And you might say, well, this is solved for y. This is y equals. Well, it's not solved for y in terms of x, though. You know, if I say y is a function of x, that means that you know, y equals some expression, some formula that's exclusively in terms of x. And this one, it might say y equals, but it's not solved exclusively in terms of x. So that means it's like the other problems in this video and where we use this technique that I've been showing you. Okay? All right. So you know the steps by now. I mean, at least I'm, it would be just, I would repeat them in this problem. So... All right, here's the first step. Find the derivative with respect to x of all terms on both sides of this equation with whatever rule is appropriate. And I summarize that by writing this. This says I'll take the derivative with respect to x of that equation and all terms on both sides. Uh, over here, that would be fairly simple. Y prime. Okay, and what would the rule be for this? Okay, we'd have to use the chain rule. This is not sine of x, it's sine of something more than x, right? Uh, like, what's the chain rule say for sine? Uh, so we've had this, at least this semester, that I'm making this video, we've had this on the formula sheets before, but if y was sine of u, where u is some formula, you know, it's more than just a basic variable, uh, and y prime is cosine of u times u prime, so that would be in order for this one, okay? So I need to do this, I need to say cosine x times y, then times the derivative of that interior part right there, u prime times the derivative of the u. Well, that'd be times the derivative of x times y. Well, for that, I have to use the product rule. What's the derivative of x times y? Well, f prime times g plus g prime. What's the derivative of y? y prime times x. So it's going to look like that. All right. Okay. Okay. So... Now, let's say that I've, I've done my part that I need to do here in the first step. Uh, second part. Now, you know I'm going to solve for y prime. 
Okay. I'll 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 do one step over from here to here. I'll distribute. I know that I'm going to have to multiply all this together in order for me to move the terms freely how I need to. So, let me write down y prime let's multiply in here, let's say y times cosine xy. And then let's say y prime uh, x times cosine xy. Okay, so that would be that right hand side as it plays out. And again, I'm going to solve for y prime, so that means grouping those terms together, factoring, and solving. So let me move this over here. So like this moving to the left, that will make it negative. Okay. And then that would leave this behind, right? Okay. And then what do we say we do in this situation? I have y prime and it's in two different terms. I'd have to factor it out. And I'll get 1 minus x cosine xy, right? You can check my factoring because you can remultiply through there. All right, and we'll get here. And now we're one step away. All I need to do is divide by this entire quantity, okay? If I divide both sides by 1 minus x cosine xy, then I will get this, okay? This thing right here, y cosine xy, divide by that entire quantity, 1 minus x cosine xy, and then there it is. There's our derivative.